Thanks to all my supporters for helping out the channel. If you want to join, links are in the description. Hey guys, you saw the final result at the beginning of the video, but basically today we're going to be doing some uh, 3D camera tracking inside of a green screenshot and then compositing that all together. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you want to work along with us, uh, all the links to all the things I use are in the description below for you guys to download. So make sure you go download them. Uh, anyways, to get started, let's come and go to VFX motion tracking, then open up our clip. Okay, so here is our footage, our green screen footage.mp4. We're just going to open that up. Uh, now you will see the color is off, so we're going to come change the color management to standard. Uh, and then we're going to set the scene frames and prefetch our footage. Okay, so now we are actually ready to start camera tracking our footage. Uh, so let's go ahead and change it to previous frame, normalize, and then set the correlation to a 0.9. Uh, right there, so that is looking pretty good. Uh, now let's see, uh, to make sure that our little tracking marker is the correct size, we're just going to put one down holding control and clicking. Uh, and then if we press Alt and S, that will reveal the search area. So we can see that these uh, this is a little bit small, so we're going to increase this a bit. So like that and that. Let's see, that's much better. So I'm going to stick with this pattern size and search size, so uh, just find what works for you. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this little track right here. Okay, so you can see that we have these blue markers on our wall, so we just need to track those. Uh, so just hold control and click. And we just want to select all of them like this. Uh, you do want to select them on both sides. I'm not really going to worry about uh, the ones that are closer to his body, uh, just because those are going to... Uh, be gone so fast that we're not even going to worry about tracking those. Uh, so I'll come back when I have them all uh, clicked. Okay, so here are all the tracking markers. I'm just going to hit A to select all these and hold Control and press T, and those will start tracking forward. Okay, you will notice that a lot of them uh, kind of get uh, messed up around here, and that's because we actually uh, dolly in a bit. Uh, so let's just set our uh, in keyframe to be 180, just so we don't have to really deal with that. Uh, let's come in here. You should see that most of the markers disappear once uh, it kind of goes across his body, just because uh, it's no longer tracking the marker. Do you want to make sure that uh, none of your markers actually like stick to him? Uh, like, let's say this marker like actually stuck to his arm. And started tracking his arm sometimes it does do that so you just have to watch out for that but luckily for mine it did not okay so all of this is looking good however if we go to the end of the clip you'll notice that we have a lot of dead markers uh so to actually track the other way uh we could you know of course just uh kind of track them as soon as they be, uh, get revealed again however uh there's an easier method if we just come to the last frame uh we can see that we have all of these markers uh so basically we're just going to place uh markers on the blue dots again however this time instead of tracking forwards we're going to track backwards okay so i just uh replaced my markers onto the uh existing tracking dots and now instead of holding uh control on t we can actually come down here and hit this little button right here and that will basically track the markers but in reverse uh, first things first though we do have to uh, select all of them so hit a select all of those and then hit that button and that will start tracking the markers in reverse instead of forward okay so now you can see if we come throughout our footage we have all the markers tracked on both sides of them and then as soon as they are revealed uh, over here they become active tracking markers again so that's just an easy way to kind of uh, get some easy tracking Okay, so now let's solve our camera motion. Go to solve. I'm going to hit keyframe and refine all of these and then solve the camera motion. Okay, so we got a solve error of a 3.39, so that's all right. Uh, we can clean that up a bit, so let's cl come clean the tracks. I'm just going to push up this reprojection error until we get just a few uh, like that. I'm just going to start out with those two and then solve the camera motion again. Okay, you can see with that, uh, we already got our solve error down to a 0.54. Uh, so that's really nice. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and disable this keyframe uh, just so you don't have to keep finding that. And I'm going to go ahead and clean the tracks one more time uh, and try to get this as low as we possibly can. Uh, so clean that. I'm going to select these three at the bottom, delete those, and solve it again. Okay, so that got us down to a 0.39. I'm going to continue to do that step until I get it below a 0.3. Okay, guys, so I was able to get my solve error down to a 0.28. That is looking pretty good. Uh, you can see this blue line is pretty straight. Uh, you do want to make sure that your line is straight at the bottom because uh, that's basically the solve error throughout our clip. Uh, so now we are actually ready to go ahead and set up our tracking scene. So set that up real quick. Okay, now that that's set, we can set our floor. So I'm just going to select three of the points on that floor, set that to be our floor. Then we need to set our origin, our y-axis, and then I'm going to select two of these points and then set the scale and just bring that up a bit something like that uh, and that should be the camera tracking complete 
Now we can actually check to make sure it's uh, tracked correctly by coming over to the layout tab. Uh, I'm just going to go into the camera view and then uh, to actually get this uh, up on the floor plane we're going to hit G, Z and then hold control and click that up one. Uh, now it's on the floor and if we hide this by hitting H uh, we can now see if it's tracked correctly. Okay, so mine is looking pretty good. You should see no sliding or anything. If you do, uh, you might either A, not have it on the floor, so you do wanna make sure it's on the floor, or B, uh, you need to resolve and get a lower solve error. Uh, but this is looking pretty good for what we need it for. Now, in this tutorial, I'm not gonna show you how I did the background, uh, since that's gonna be a whole uh, tutorial series on itself. Uh, but basically, just a basic rule of thumb is to just make sure you remember your floor plane. So if I come out here, uh, this is going to be the floor so if this box is anywhere above or below uh, this little floor plane it's going to look like it's floating and everything and that it's not really sitting on the floor uh, so with that in mind we can actually go ahead and model out a scene uh, so let's go to the one i modeled out previously okay so here's the scene i modeled out previously uh, we can come into render view just to see what this is looking like okay we can see that we have uh, some buildings some sidewalk and everything see I modeled out some mountains nothing too fancy or whatever uh, if you downloaded my uh, files I actually included the video file I rendered out of this so you can use that uh, for your compositing uh, but one thing to note here is uh, I wanted to make sure to get the shadow in the scene and how I did that was actually uh, export out a frame of my video uh, let me just demonstrate this by adding a little plane in our scene and just rotating that around so so pretend that this has the image of a frame of our video that we shot uh, with the uh, actor standing in the middle of the scene what I basically did is I came and uh, went into edit mode by hitting tab then if you hit K on your keyboard you go into the knife tool and then you can just carve out uh, the rough outline of your character like that and then if you hit enter you can now have that little shape and if you just delete the other faces you will have a nice little uh, custom shape so I did that to my uh, actors so you can actually see that right here uh, I have a little blob that's roughly the shape of my actor when he was standing there and all I did to get it uh, more 3d instead of a 2d plane was just extrude it and then add a little bit of subdivision surface uh, I didn't really care what it looked like uh, because I knew it was only going to be affecting the shadows so that's why I didn't really bother with how this looked now once we have that I created a new uh, collection over here the shadow collection and if you right click that and then go into the view layer you can set this to be indirect only that basically means that uh, anything in that collection is only going to affect the shadows or reflections or anything like that uh, and not the actual diffusion so we won't be able to see the actual object however we will see whatever it affects such as shadow uh, so that is why I added that okay again we're not going to go into how to make your own custom scene uh, since that is a whole uh, different breed of stuff that we need to talk about uh, but here's a scene I did uh, so now let's actually go into a new project and talk about how to composite this together now I actually did my compositing inside of After Effects. Uh, I highly recommend you use After Effects if you have that. Uh, but since it is paid, I do want to show you guys how to do it inside Blender. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first of all, we need to change uh, the FPS of our clip. Uh, so I'm just going to come down here to frame rate, uh, select this one since that's the correct FPS of our clip. Now we can come into the compositing tab. I'm going to hit use notes to add notes. Uh, we don't really need the render layers because we're only going to be dealing with compositing. Uh, and then also a good rule of thumb is to enable the uh, node wrangler add-on so I'm just going to come up to add-ons and then type in node wrangler and it should be right there so you want to make sure that is enabled next let's go ahead and add in our movie clip so I'm going to add in a movie clip node like that and then open up our footage okay again this is our footage uh, so I'm just going to open that up now for me, I actually have the background saved as a PNG image sequence. However, in the uh, clip below, I saved it as a MP4 file. So for you, uh, you wanna add another movie clip node and then import in that, uh, that background image. But for me, I'm gonna add in a image node since mine is a image sequence. So again, uh, movie clip for you, image uh, for me. I'm just gonna open that up. Uh, and this is where you would open up your background footage. Okay, so uh, now I have that in. Now we need to combine it with a alpha over node. Uh, just plug the image in the bottom and then the movie clip into the top. And then with the node wrangler add-on, you can hold shift control and click to add a viewer node just so we can see what that is looking like. So if you hit V, you can zoom out a bit. Now you will see that these are different sizes. Uh, so what I am going to do is add in a scale node for our movie clip. I'm gonna set this to render size, uh, stretch, 
and that should uh, get it back down and we can do that since we are going to be rendering out as a uh, HD movie. Okay, so we actually need to switch uh, the image sockets like that. Uh, and now comes the fun part uh, where you uh, have to actually mess around with the keying. So to do that, we're going to add in a keying node right here. Just plug that image into that. And then the key color, let's just zoom in a bit. We want to select a nice green color. So just eyedropper that right there. I'm going to say that should be pretty all right. Uh, then we can mess around with this clip black and this clip white uh, just to dial that in a little bit. Okay, again, guys, I highly recommend you guys do it in After Effects because, because you can see right here uh, that the keying isn't that great inside the Blender. It's one of the things that I've always had a, a kind of gripe about with Blender that the keying node really isn't the best. So really just uh, find a way to do it inside of another program and bring it back in. That's probably the best way. But still, we're going to find out how to do it inside of Blender. Uh, so now what we need to do is kind of isolate this area because right now you can kind of see the ceiling and some of the floor over here. So we need to actually make a mask. So let's go to the layout tab. I'm going to change this to be our movie clip editor. Just going to open up our green screen footage. And the uh, mask is super simple for this. What we're going to do is change from tracking to mask. And then like in tracking, we can just hold control, kind of make a little uh, circle around him uh, like that. So that is uh, pretty good. We're just going to hit A to select all those. Then we can actually turn the auto keying uh, on. So now uh, we're just gonna go throughout our footage and make sure that we always have him inside the mask. And we might actually have it pretty good. Oh, kind of clips right here. So we need to move this over like that. Uh, we're basically just gonna uh, keep moving this wherever it needs to be trying to cover our whole actor. Uh, and I'm doing that by hitting G, uh, just so you know, it's kind of the same as in the 3D viewport. So I'm just gonna continue to do that all through our, our footage. Okay, so I think uh, my mask is looking pretty good now. Uh, it's covering his whole body throughout the clip. Uh, so now we can turn this off. And also we need to set our end keyframe to be the same as before. So mine was 180, so you just wanna reset that. Now if we come to the compositing, we can add in a mask note like that. We're gonna, just gonna bring that mask in and then we're gonna put this mask into the factor of our alpha over now. And just like that, you can kind of see that we now have our mask in. Uh, we now need to blur it just a tiny bit because we can see some uh, weird stuff going on up there. So I'm just gonna add a quick Gaussian blur. Let's try 20. Hopefully that'll just like feather the edge a little bit. Uh, that's actually because we have our key note a little bit off. So just play around with the clip black and clip white until you get something that you like. Okay, so there we go. Uh, here are my values. If you just want to copy that, that's the best I could find. Uh, so now finally what we need to do is remove these uh, blue little tracking markers. And again, uh, to do that, we're just going to add another key note. So I'm just going to duplicate this by holding Shift and D and then place that right after. Uh, but for this, instead of green, we're going to add blue. So let's just zoom in real close here. And then for the key color, I'm gonna select this right there. Uh, so that blue, we're gonna see how that takes out. Uh, then again, we need to play around with the clip black and clip white uh, to actually crunch those and get the uh, right color. Okay guys, so here is the best I could do uh, with Blender settings. Again, the king isn't that great. So uh, I did mine in After Effects and that was 10 times better. Uh, so again, I highly recommend that. Anyway, finally, I noticed that the color correction is kind of off, so I'm just going to add in a color balance note right here and try to uh, kind of mess around with the colors to try to get it a little more accurate and matching our scene. So let's just push that up. I might need to make it a little bit more saturated also. So let's go ahead and add in a hue saturation node beside that and just bump that saturation up a tiny bit since it's kind of dull right now. I also notice it's a little green, so I'm going to try to push this a little towards magenta. Hopefully that color uh, counteracts that. That's looking much better. I might do a little bit more just because that's looking a little weird. Okay, <laughs> a little too much. So let's bring that back. And we're doing magenta since it's the opposite of green on the color wheel, you can see there. Okay, so that's basically all the uh, compositing done. Uh, finally, we just need to uh, plug this image up to the composite node and let's set up some output settings and go ahead and render this out. 
So in the output properties, we're gonna uh, set our output folder. Okay, just gonna hit accept right there. And then uh, we need FFmpeg, uh, we need it to be an MP4 file. And then our quality, I'm gonna set to high, like that. Uh, now we are actually ready to render our animation. So let's come up here and hit render animation. Okay guys, so here is the final result that we got from this tutorial. Uh, now this is the Blender composition that we did. However, this one is the After Effects uh, composition that we did. Uh, now you can tell a stark difference in the two. Uh, you can tell that the keying is a lot better. Uh, again, I can't stress this enough. Blender has got to step up their game. Uh, with keying is just not that great uh, compared to other options out there. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. We have a Patreon, Discord, and a Buy Me Coffee. Uh, links to those are in the description below if you want to help out the channel. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Peace.